Holly, thank you so much for joining me today. And thank you so much for asking me. I know. You're so just, privileged. Oh no, honestly, thank you for coming. I think it's very rare that I get to bring people on that are from, I'm going to say local, but I'm a wolf, so I can't really say that. <laughs> We're not that far apart. <laughs> oh, no, so obviously I know you, I've done my research, but I really want to go back to like the earlier story of you to introduce you to all the viewers that have never heard of you because we're going to start growing your personal brand. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, so what is the earlier story of Holly? Um, so originally I was a hairdresser and I met my partner, Ashley. Um, at this point, Ashley already had like a couple of shops, um, like high street stores in suburbs around like Liverpool and across the north. Yeah. Um, so together we grew them and all of a sudden blinked and we had 18 18 18 yeah literally 18 what shops were they so they were just like high street uh, fast fashion high street stores um kind of selling what we sell now but yeah we had 18 at one point um so then at this point I give up hairdressing and I just remember getting a phone call I should be like Hall you know staff drank in sick can you come and cover the shop and I'd be like I've got a full day of clients there is no way yeah. and then this kept history kept repeating itself and slowly but surely I jumped full board with them and then um yeah we we grew the high street stores and it was it was an amazing experience oh my gosh so it was if you look back now was hairdressing your passion or would you find that now that you could say that fashion was your passion I think looking back then, I was really young when I when I met Ashley. I was only eighteen. There's ten years between us, yeah. so I was probably like at a stage in my life where I loved it, but you know, I was still young, you know, to do something else or not know where I was meant to be. If you get me, yeah, it? yeah. Kind of like wrote your wrote, yeah. wrote your journey, and then slowly but surely, obviously helping out in the stores. Um, I began to love it more than I love hairdressing, and I'd, I'd want to be there. Yeah, and you know, obviously we were both in it together. So I wanted to be there as much as Ash was really. If, yeah. If you get me, if that yeah. makes sense. And yeah, so I'll probably say now fashion, fashion is. What was it like running 18 stores? Because I can imagine that to be really difficult. Um, it was, it was chaotic. That's the only thing I could say from, from one hour you'd be in one store and then between another two hours you'd be delivering stock to another store you'd be going around checking everything was okay um you know it was it was crazy some stores would obviously perform a lot better than others so you were driving taking stock from one store then to put in the better performance store um it was it it, it was crazy really I look back and think how how did we do it and then yeah. obviously when the stores would shut at like five o'clock of an evening, we'd have to go to our little unit, restock the stores, made sure that everything was okay for the next day, prep, steamed, merchandise the whole store, dress the windows um, and make sure all, all the staff were okay. It's like really so, hard graft. Yeah, it was. It? It, looking back now, I do think, how did we used to do that in one day? Obviously to what we do now, it's, it's non-comparison, <laughs> but... I do look back and think, wow, like, yeah. And I fell pregnant quite young as well at this stage. Yeah, I was, um, I think I was 19 when I fell pregnant with my first daughter. So um, I was doing doing all this while being pregnant too. <laughs> that is crazy. So yeah. did you have an online side of the business then as well? Or was it all retail? So no, it was just purely retail. At this point though, um, Instagram had just become around. Obviously Facebook was there, but Instagram had just become around. So, um, no, sorry, Facebook would come around, but Instagram had uh, just yeah, come yeah, around. Um, so obviously we set, we set some up for the stores and we were getting people messaging all the time saying, can I come and collect my parcel? Can't make it to the shop. Um, do you do local delivery? Um, and us being us, you know, the customer was number one. We do yeah. everything we can for them. And we just noticed this demand coming through social media, asking to collect the parcel more. Um, we noticed obviously the high street was declining a bit. The shops Monday to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, there wasn't much footfall. If the yeah. weather was bad, you could get 20 people through your door and yeah. not every not every person converted and actually bought something. So it was hard. It was getting to the point where, you know, them days w was really hard. So we'd concentrate on instagram marketing yeah um i'd be doing little try-ons in the shop little mirror pics trying to put all the new stock together 
um, and we just noticed such a demand for like as what we call now click and collect or local delivery yeah um and this was across every store now this was happening so um yeah it's like the convenience isn't it yeah people definitely that convenience. yeah and I just feel like a lot of people you know were in work all the time they couldn't reach to us and then obviously yeah. we'd shut at 5 30 um and our busiest days were Friday Saturday and the odd Sunday when we'd open yeah I still so, find yeah. that now with shops nowadays though if you've had like a really long day you need to run to a shop but you're not finishing work till like seven no, you or can't eight. make it there's nowhere to go you literally cannot make it I know myself even like with the children as well sometimes I think I'm just not gonna go shopping yeah yeah no way it's a nightmare like, <laughs> yeah well, you know what so what happened then after them stores so um social media obviously grew we noticed um a lot more of click and collects coming through instagram again with facebook and there was none of this like live shopping yeah it was just purely you know you posted a picture people liked it they'd message and say can you save me one kind of come in and so on really so that happened and obviously we did notice such a huge decline in the high street yeah. not only on them days where I mentioned previously but every day really so um you know we thought right we're gonna we're gonna set up an online website for people yeah. to purchase off we ended up getting a small unit yeah now this decision to get the small unit was it was massive to us, you know, we're used to like small square feet. We weren't used to like the whole like warehouse yeah, industry. So we were kind of a bit like, are we doing the right thing? We, we toyed with the idea for months back and forth. And in the end, we ended, we found a lovely one in Bersco and thought it's, it's central to all the stores. It's easy, accessible to get to. So we ended up going with it. Um, And to what I look back to now, it it was tiny, but yeah. at that time, it was, how are we going to fill this unit? That yeah. That's all I could remember thinking, how are we going to fill this unit? You know, we've got to do everything from it, pick and pack photography, but slowly but surely we did. And yeah. there was only three of us. There was myself, Ash and another lady. And we were manually trying to sort the shops out, make sure they had stock and fill the warehouse. The weeks were passing by and we would forever be calling the shops up to say, sorry, guys, can we take the stock off you? You know, it's wanted for an online sale. And it just gradually became like that. Yeah. We were forever taking the stock off them and the poor shops ended up having nothing in them because this online business just wanted everything from us. Yeah. And it just grew overnight. Um, And obviously this was at a time when influencer marketing was the get-go and I'll never forget um it was Danielle Lloyd actually she had yeah. liked one of our Instagram posts so she's obviously from Liverpool yeah she must have saw us so we kindly asked her could we send her I'll never forget it it was like this angel wing tracksuit yeah so we sent her one <clears throat> and she posted it on her Instagram we reshared it and I think we literally sold around about 130 units within really? like 15 minutes of it posting it and now this was new to us you know oh we've gosh. never we'd never worked with influencers before we'd never done anything like that um and I just remember me and Ash were sitting there and we just kept hearing the the ching the Shopify, <laughs> the Shopify ching and, the and it ching. wasn't Shopify back then <gasps> no it wasn't we just heard obviously the ching coming through and we were like what has happened yeah. like what what has gone on I remember Ash being on the phone to the supplier being like, I need more of this tracksuit tomorrow, please, please, please. And he'd be running up and down the motorway to get it. Oh, And um, yeah, so that was our very first like social media post with an influencer. With an influencer. And um, yeah, that set us on the map really. That's crazy. Isn't it crazy how the power of influencers, like would you still say it's like the same strength now with influencers as it is as, as it was back then? No, I definitely wouldn't say it's the same strength now. I feel like it's horses for courses. I feel like if you put the right product on the right influencer, it it, it will do amazing. Yeah. You've just got to be knowledgeable around it. You know, there's um there's obviously, you know, you can look yourself and you know that things girls are wearing things that they, you know, you they wouldn't wear. And obviously it looks like yeah. an ad, doesn't it? And yeah. I feel like with 
Glamify where we are now. We have a pro- we have a product that people generally want. Like they'll message me for it and they'll wear it and 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 I know that their followers believe in that they love it as well. So I do think you know it, it, times have changed a bit now with yeah. this. I yeah. think it's different when people are asking because it's kind of expected. Like, I get loads of emails every single day. Yeah. It's like such and such wants to send you this product. But if you don't relate to it and you're just like, accepting anything, people can see through it now, can't they? One million percent. And I feel like wind back to like 10 years ago, maybe, yeah, like eight to 10 years ago, the like people, girls would wear anything. And yeah, yeah, they would. They would words, even if yeah. you look at like the likes of Gymshark. They absolutely blew up massively because they were working with influencers before influencers were really a thing. So like that, that term influencer marketing, we didn't really know what influencers were back no. then. We were just working with people that had a social presence and it was like ads in a sense. And we kind of just wanted to get what they were wearing yeah. just because they were seeing it. it. We wanted that. Yeah. 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 That celebrity was in it. So I need that. Literally. It was just like fingers first on trying to get hold of that product, wasn't yeah. it? And that shot with the influencer in the outfit. Would you say it's different now with influencers back then? It was more of like a celebrity outlook, whereas now it's more like a community outlook of one million percent. Yeah. I'd say back then when, um, yeah, back then I would I would say it was more reality TV stars. Yeah, I would say um, when we had our previous previous business, it would it would be first to get the first person off Love Island or the yeah. first person off Big Brother. Um, yeah, you had to be in it to be, you had to be in it to win it really. Whoever, you know, whoever was the trending person at that moment, you needed her signed to your brand. To your brand at that time. What would you say is different now? Um, what would you say is different now? Probably, I just feel like people are, like we said before, it's a bit more of like a community. Yeah. And I feel like there's a lot more real people now on social media. Yeah, there is. Especially with TikTok. Yeah, there's a lot more real people. And I feel like I look for people, for influencers who generally inspire me, who I follow, you know, not not necessarily have to be like a business owner or a mother. It can be just someone who's got amazing style who will throw an outfit together. You know, my yeah. my products aren't like expensive. My average value order is like forty pounds. A dress is like thirty pounds. So they could style that dress up amazing, and it would do so so well for us. Yeah. Um, and times have changed now. Whereas back then, videos, lives weren't a thing, and now they are. People yeah. want to see, like, get ready with me. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like the realness. Yeah, the realness. Yeah. And yeah. The realness behind the person as well, and their whole life, not just still images. Yeah, I find now that their personalities sell the brand more than the brand. One does. million percent. Yeah. Okay, so going back, I always do this. I start on one thing and then I'm over here. But going back oh, to <laughs> so the start of the journey. So you had the eighteen stores. You then obviously realised it was growing massively online. What brand was that? So the high street stores were called Paparazzi. I know that a lot of people may have known them when I say it. People yeah. were like, oh, I didn't realise that. Yeah. So the high street stores were called Paparazzi. And then when we went online with that, we were toying with the name, you know, and we still wanted it to be relatable to the stores. Yeah. Um. So we came up the name of Miss Pap, which is, you know, Paparazzi. You'd be yeah. seen in that dress. You get your papped. Yeah. So, I love that. Yeah. That's, that's so where Miss Pap came from. No, I like that. Okay, so... Miss Pap, now that had obviously an incredible story behind it. Yeah. What was it like transitioning once you'd got rid of all of them stores and everything was online? Did you bring the same team that were in them stores over to the warehouse eventually or was it a complete new team? Yeah, so obviously it was quite a... Even though it was like such a big, really exciting time for like me and Ash and a lot of team members, a a lot of other staff were, you know only to what I can imagine back then we're probably a little bit worried about their job as well thinking you know we don't really know how we're gonna fit in with this new this new era of the business being online you know we've only worked in retail you know I've only dressed windows we've got no experience and Normie or Ash you know yeah none of us have, have got like a fashion degree or a business degree we just we just went with it really so we did bring a lot of the staff over um some it went for them yeah. I've got to say it went for them it, it's not um it's not for the faint hearted <laughs> that's what I've got to say yeah so, it's also adjusting isn't it yeah you think you've got you 
the whole internet world was something new. Yeah. Whilst it had come about, everyone was like, what? Sell people online? as well. People love to see the customers. You weren't seeing that customer. Yeah. So you were obviously behind it a lot. Um, yeah. So I do feel like a lot of, it was a little bit of a bit of sweet, a bit of sweet moment. A lot yeah. of people, you know, it went for them and went back into retail and a lot of the team members came with us and I believe to this day, some may still be there. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. So, so tell me a little bit more about Miss Pap overall. Um, so yeah, it was, it was man and Ash's baby. We literally grew it from everything we had. Um, yeah, we started off working with reality TV stars. Yeah. I remember the first collaboration we done was with Megan, obviously the Danielle Lloyd Instagram post. We've done a few of them. Yeah. And then um, we done a collaboration with Megan McKenna as soon as she left off Big Brother. Yeah, yeah. that was it. So it's many years back. ago now. <laughs> um, and that just put us on the map. It Amazing. really did. Um, looking back now, you know, that business, as soon as we signed that deal with Megan, it just blew up overnight. Yeah. It really did. You know, we went from having five members of staff to 150, moved warehouses Amazing. about four or five times. There was one point where we, we had um, our warehouse and we always, we all, I suppose it's any business you're in, you always get that fear of doing the next step of, yeah. you know, moving to that new warehouse, the logistics side of it. So every time we've been ready to make that move, we've always tried to try to squeeze the most out of it. Containers yeah. in the yard, packing bays in the containers, <laughs> you name it, we've done it yeah. just before we've took that next step. And then once, um, you know, we had signed these relative TV stars, the, there was there was amazing ones that we've worked with. Um, we grew out of all the units that we had and we had to move into our main, what I call a lifetime unit, basically. Yeah. So we made that move. It was unbelievable. Like the lesson, the life lessons that it's taught us as well. Um, it was just, it was phenomenal, really. And looking back to having that many members of staff who were experienced in so many, you know, different departments who were learning me and Ash as we went along. Because, yeah. you know, you know, we... We were learning with it too. It was all yeah. new to us. We never had experience. Um, You'd gone from one extreme to another. We'd gone, yeah, yeah, we'd literally gone from one extreme to another. Um, we were sourcing in new um, products that we've not had in in the shops. You know, we'd only ever focus on like clothing and a little bit of footwear, a few accessories. Whereas with Miss Pap, you know, there was the beauty side of it, the categories off the website where yeah. you could basically sell anything on it. Yeah. So... Yeah, it was. It was it was amazing. What would um, you say them life lessons were that it taught you when you moved? Um, hold on to everything that you've got, basically. Don't make the change, you know, don't take the jump too soon. And I feel like that that has probably been the biggest part of us. You know, we always step back and we tried to make make work what we had before we had to take that next step. Yeah. Next step. And I think the biggest part would have been the warehouse. It's a huge commitment. It's five year deal. It's yeah. not as if, you know, you can just walk out of it. You have got to get them sales in to pay all these bills yeah. basically. And, you know, that's what we done. We just had to keep the wheels turning. And as much as an amazing, amazing thing it is, it's also the most scariest thing it is as well. Knowing that you've got that wage bill coming in, yeah. you've got that rent, you've got the reach, you've got everything. Or yeah, you know, your logistic you bills and it, it's on me and Ash basically, yeah. If you take it back to the fear of when you got your first unit, because obviously you said that was so scary getting it. Do you think it was the same fear that you felt when you got the first store? No, probably not. Why is that? No, well, I can't really say that because when I met Ash, you already had a few. Yeah. So um, with the stores... I think no matter we obviously done our homework a bit so we'd go and we'd visit the store most Saturdays like the area where we wanted the store to be we'd go and visit we'd have a coffee yeah. you know we'd spend a good few hours there look at the footfall so I think with the stores you always know that you would have some kind of footfall coming through that yeah. door even if you had to change your product if the clientele was maybe like a little bit younger or older we'd sell children's wear or we'd sell 
Yeah, so you can you know, figure it out. We'd do like an older demographic, we'd figure it out. Yeah. But with the warehouse, it, it's it's a commitment and it's 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 everything really. And it's yeah. not just the warehouse, it's it's the staff that comes with it, it's the infrastructure, it's the more um warehousing, you know, management, the software. It's everything so that it's comes with it. And it really customers. is, yeah. And you've got to get them sales in to pay for it all. Yeah. So the story of Miss Pop was obviously incredible. What happened? I'm going to say the end of Miss Pop. It's not the end. So what happened after you guys decided to, I'm going to say exit? Um, it just got to the point where, as you know, me and Ash had give it our all. We'd done everything we could. Um, you know, it was self-funded from ourselves. We had no investment from anyone. And we just got to the point where we just could not take it any further. Yeah. Um, and with, you know, taking it further again, I know I keep relaying back to it, but it did. It needed more infrastructure, more staff. And, you know, we just didn't have the capital to do it. Yeah. So we did look at every, you know, every option that was available to us. And we just felt like, you know, we give it our all. And it was, it was time to, you know, set it free and let it, let it become where, where it needed to be. It was pretty yeah. up there with some of like the most amazing competitors back then. You've obviously got like Pretty Little Thing, Misguided, Boohoo in the style. And it was, it was up there with all them. Yeah. And yeah. And I just felt like it, it, it needed to be where it, where it should be. And me and Ash just couldn't, we couldn't do it. And we didn't have the capital to do yeah. capital to do it as well. How did it feel when you did eventually exit? Um, oh, I was heartbroken. Yeah. Heartbroken. Like it was probably one of the worst things. I know it probably sounds a bit cliche, but it was one of the worst things probably that we've been through. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's gone from being your everyday baby yeah. that you've grown from the ground up. And then you're passing it off to somebody else. That was it. And it was kind of like, what are we going to do next? Like we had that fear as well. And it was a bit of everything. It was just a roller coaster of emotions. Um, and looking back now, I just think like, I don't know how me and Ash actually, we survived that whole like couple of months, you know, yeah. going through it because it was, and it was, you know, we we had a daughter as well. And, you know, we had, we had to do things for her too. Yeah. That loss of control in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. But as when we did um, sell the business, we obviously worked for 12 months with Boohoo, who bought yeah. Miss Papa from us. We worked for 12 months for them, which I am forever grateful for because it was the most amazing. Even though we were coming out of this thinking, what are we going to do? You know, we were a little bit heartbroken that our baby, you know, we were giving it, it was going. Yeah. Um. Working for a company like that for 12 months was the best thing that could have ever, ever happened to us because we learned so much. We met some amazing people along the way. Yeah. Um, we worked with marketing budgets, which we've never been able to work with before with it being such, you know, a big company. Yeah. Um, it was just amazing. And I personally have never been able to you know, finish work at half five. Literally, if I wanted to turn my phone off, I could. Yeah. Um, it just gave me a lot of, it just gave me that year, a lot of time with my daughter that I've never been able to have. Yeah. Because of starting the business at such a young age and having her at such a young age. That whole year, you know, Ash, work, Ash works of a Sunday, we does now, but when we both worked with Boohoo for that whole year, you know, we both have a weekend off. Yeah. We've never been able to do that. Never. So I'm so grateful for that, um, that opportunity as well, because it was amazing. I could say I loved it. Ash, on the other hand, was a bit like, no, it just wasn't for him. Yeah. I could just see you was really like a bit down and stuff. You know, he was used to running this multi multi million pound business. Yeah. You know, he was here, there, everywhere, traveling the world to all of a sudden just a bit standstill. So it would have, I'm guessing it would have been difficult for Ash because you've gone for him. He's had all these stores, you've come into it, you've then grown it together. You've then had that reward of exiting the company and having that time back with family. But it's a lot when you're so used to being a million miles an hour to all of a sudden being able to turn your phone off at half five. It's like, is this the norm? Because that's, it's a different, a complete different norm to what you were used to. Definitely. We've never, 
you know we've never been able to do that and it was even like just having an even meal together we've yeah. never we've never ever I know it sounds crazy but we've never really you know yeah. it that's just been our life and to have it it was amazing it really really was but I just felt at that point Ash was kind of a little bit lost and and it was probably that thought of like what really are we going to do next and yeah. are we going to stay here um and probably we did get to that point where as we'd done everything we could you know we integrated Miss Pap over to their system and it was kind of like are they going to need us forever yeah so after so, that, um, after that 12 month period did they want you to stay so after that 12 month period um, we did have to sign a non-compete where as we weren't allowed to do fast fashion yeah at all um so I think at that point um they'd given Ash the go ahead I think they must have thought like this poor guy like he's done fast fashion all his life and yeah yeah and we did try other businesses so so as soon as that non-compete was over um we did decide um, to obviously part ways yeah. which again that was another really really hard decision because I loved it yeah. like I was probably living my best life really yeah. do you know what I mean and especially with my daughter and you know time and even like seeing family and friends I've it's always hard for me to catch up or go for a coffee and in that year I was able to do all that really yeah. so yeah I'm forever grateful for that um so when we eventually decided to part ways, you know, we toyed with the idea of a few things. We did dip our fingers in a few other businesses, um, but they just weren't for us. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> no, they just weren't for us. <laughs> so even though we did give them our all and yeah, I just feel like, you know, you, you are born to do what you're meant to do, yeah. aren't you really? So um, yeah, non-compete over. So Glamify all started from Glamify was originally an eyelash brand yeah that we were running alongside Miss Pap and so we already had this going on in the background anyway yeah. selling eyelashes and again loved it it was amazing it was an amazing business you know the customers loved it the product was perfect but again I don't think we were that passionate about it because yeah. you know we had no knowledge on it we were just um gauging on what customers wanted and what styles they loved really yeah and yeah so again that was one that you know it's still there to this day to be honest it is yeah. still there but we thought um fashion is for us and that is what we're going to do again yeah so some people would look at that and say you've grown that multi-million pound business you've then exited it and you've gone oh my gosh I just need to get back into it and some people be like are you crazy because no, it would have been was. a hard time but I'm guessing if that's in your blood and that's what you want to do, what would you say the day you decided to launch Glamify? I know it was obviously eyelashes in the beginning. What, how were you feeling at that time? Can you think back to the day you thought, right, we're going to go back into something now? I was really excited. Um, more, more probably a little bit more excited than Ash, to be honest, because I just kind of felt like I lost myself a little bit. Yeah. And having a business that once was yours and then working for it, was so so hard on yeah. on a prod like on something that you are so passionate about and you love and you know it was our baby we put everything into it so for for me I probably can't speak on Ash's behalf he'll probably tell you his yeah. thoughts and stuff but for me it was it was amazing it yeah. was like right this is me this is what I'm born meant to do again I'm yeah. back I'm here <laughs> no, this literally. is it um so yeah so that feeling for me was just surreal. I was just ready to go again, really. Yeah, and especially because the mistakes that had been made, I knew to not make them again. Yeah. You know, I knew where in, you know, a few places we went wrong, you know, we know now. Yeah. And I do feel that how, that is why Glamify is where it is today and a success that it is because, you know, we've had a major life lesson and we, you name it, we've been through it. Yeah. And there's nothing that I think that we haven't gone through it, Miss Pap days, that now, you know, it couldn't knock us down because we've been there, we've been at that low bit and then now, you know, we're, here we are. Yeah. So every day is still different. <laughs> every day is still different. Like I told you before we Literally. started here, I was in the warehouse firefighting, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. What would you say were some of the skills that you learned when you went to Boohoo that you've then obviously instilled into Glamify today? Um, <clears throat> Probably like the 
influence side of it. Obviously, that is my day to day role, even though I do every aspect of the business. Yeah. Um, probably influencer marketing, you know, budget for campaigns, just to make sure you get a good ROI back on it. Yeah. Um, the buying part of it, you know, we got, we met a lot of new suppliers who we'd not m- met before. Yeah. Um, the, do you know what? The list is endless. It was just, it was amazing. Such an ama- amazing experience. Do you think the reason Glamify is where it is today is because of the skills that you learned at Boohoo? Or would you say it's predominantly the skills that you learned from Miss Pap or a combination? Um, I would say um, the skills that we learned from Miss Pap. Yeah. Definitely. You and the life up. lessons, one million percent. Yeah. Yeah. What was the hardest part of running Miss Pap? Um, if you ask me, I'll probably say the staff. Yeah. I am like a people's person, like, and I just, I love everyone to be happy. And if someone's not happy and if someone's not riding that wave with you, it can just be really soul destroying on the whole team. Yeah. So for me, I'd say the hardest part was the staff. Um, yeah, I just well, yeah. wanted everyone obviously to be happy. Trying to please and, everyone. But you can't. You I think know, as you an can't entrepreneur, please everyone. Yeah. As an and, entrepreneur, you do go through that. You, I've been there where you want to keep everyone happy. You're trying to do everything for them you kind of sidetrack from the business and it's definitely you focus on them would you say it's the same with Glamify now or mm, no I'd I'd say going through all that has made me as a as a woman now a little bit stronger and yeah. you know I think you know what guys if I can't make you happy and you guys need to go then be free I'm so happy yeah. for you you know it's an opportunity for someone else and yeah but I, I do, I love people and I, I like to have people happy all the time. And yeah, yeah. And I think now at Glamify, we've got an amazing team that the, they are the fabulous. I couldn't, yeah. we couldn't do it without them really. And there's not probably, and for me and Ash is not probably a part of Glamify now, part of the business that we actually don't know how to do because yeah. of having that fear of having a company of 150 staff and someone walks out that door and then you don't know how to do their role yeah. is terrifying thinking, well, who's going to do that tomorrow? Yeah. How are we going to fulfill that gap so soon? Whereas with Glamify, you know, if, if, if someone was sadly to leave me tomorrow, I'd know how to pick up the pieces right away and be like, right, yeah. it's okay. We will get someone. It's fine. Yeah. What is your view on, obviously the bigger the company grows, having more members of staff or just having better members of staff? Um... It's quite a tricky one, really, because I'd like to say both. Yeah. But I feel like um, better members of staff. Yeah. Because we went really through that with, with Jim Law. It was like, as we were growing, we needed more members of staff. And then I remember looking internally and I thought, the hard thing is when you're growing, you're at a certain point and the team are the best. But as you get to another point, sometimes the team don't necessarily move up with you and you need people that can do things quicker or they do, they've got more experience than something. So how would you handle, say, that moving on? So every interview that comes to our door, yeah. I do say, obviously, this is, you know, your job description, your role, but please, you know, if we need to help on picking and packing, if I need you to jump off and help me on this, please yeah. say you will. Yeah. And that's what I just kind of go off now yeah. and kind of say like, you know, your job role plus a bit of an all rounder. <laughs> that's what we call yeah. it in our office. Like, because there is, there's not one member of team who I do have now who will not jump off their role and help someone else Amazing. if they are struggling yeah whereas previously I'd have now that's my job role and that's all I'm doing yeah whereas nowadays um you know my staff will help out with anything yeah so yeah what makes it a good place to work at so what makes Glamify um, the place to be I, I I think me and Ash are quite you know we're good people yeah. and you know we're quite you know, I, I respect and love each and every single one of them. And, you know, I feel like if you, if you're good with your staff as well, you, you know, it's good for you. And yeah. yeah. So I think that, I hope that's a good part. But <laughs> it's yeah, always, it's always yeah. a hard question at the same time, but Definitely. it's one of them where you think you're, you build a community in the workplace as well. Like, yeah. Because you, people then want to come to work as opposed to it being Definitely. A and like my children obviously come to the office every day, every night after school. And my members of staff treat my girls like their own, you know, yeah. they'll be on the desk and they'll have the baby on the knee oh. or the baby drawing on the desk. And I, sometimes I just have a minute to myself and I think, God, I am so, so lucky because yeah. there's not a lot of people that would do that. Yeah. And you know, I know if I'm, if I get stuck, even on a weekend, I know I could ring one of their members of staff and say, guys, 
or Ash, and I know, yeah. you know, we do, we, we do, th- we do do this and not one of them will be like, you know, it's not my working hours. I'm not going to yeah. answer my phone. You know, if I ring them at 10 o'clock on a Saturday morning, they will answer that phone. Yeah. And I just think it's so hard to get people like that nowadays who treat, you know, the business that they work for as their own as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, and that's what I've got at this you know, current time and I'm forever grateful for every single one of them. Amazing. So obviously you had uh, your first daughter when you were really young. Yeah. And you've got a two-year-old now? Yes. So how do you balance multiple hats? You know what, this is a question I get asked all the time (laughs) and I honestly couldn't tell you. I do laugh though when I had Damara, um, she, obviously I, I was really young she came everywhere with us, still does to this day. The two different types of children, whereas yeah. I could take Amara anywhere, whereas more, she's a little bit more crazy. <laughs> so I'm a little bit limited to like where I can. No, I'm only joking. Yeah. But um, I just do, honestly. I don't know how yeah. I do it. I just do it. You know, if if I've got a business meeting, then everyone knows that they've just the, kid, the girls will be there. Yeah. <laughs> That's just how it is. And Amara, who is my eldest, who is 10, 11 sorry she is a huge part of the business yeah. like a huge huge part of the biz- business during lockdown we launched gummified children yeah so um at this point when we launched it we were currently living in Istanbul because okay. um when lockdown when lockdown happened here all the factories you know suppliers everything shut down we couldn't get stock and I'll never forget we sit around the kitchen table and we were thinking, how are we going to keep these wheels turning? Yeah. You know, again, staff to pay, bills to pay. We already had quite a good relationship with a few um, suppliers over in Istanbul. So yeah. they were like, come over. If you can get a flight over, come over. So we did. We booked the next flight out the next day. Oh, my gosh. Amara came with us. <clears throat> um, cut a long story short, we ended up being there for, I think it was 13 months. Wow. And it was unbelievable. I still do think to this day that if my eldest Amara would have settled there, we'd still be living there now. Yeah. It's amazing for business. You know, you go into like Zara, H&M, everything is made there. Yeah. Literally. If it's not like Portugal, it's Istanbul. Ah, incredible. So, um, yeah, she just wouldn't settle. So we ended up, we did end up coming home. But while we were there, obviously samples were made within the hours. Yeah. You could go to like Zara, H&M, you know, pick up a project that you like, take it to the factory, get it changed in so many ways, you know, and for our done. brand and it'd be done. And then Amara would shoot it that evening and it would be on the line. It would be online the next day. Um. So yeah, so Amara so is fast. such a huge, huge, huge part of our business. Um. And I do think, you know, she made my five kids, really. Yeah. Do you think it was the culture change with her being in Istanbul? And Yeah, because I feel like if we weren't, obviously, it, I love dressing the girls, like literally love it. Yeah. Um. So I do think, you know, me and Ash had spoke about, it, you know, should we do it in years to come? But I just never thought that because we're just so busy with the adults and the fashion, it was just always a bit on the back burner. Yeah. But I think because we were there on the ground, you know, we had our child model there with us, yeah. ready to get the samples done on air. Um, yeah, we, we done it. How does she find it? Oh, she loves it. Loves Absolutely it. loves it. Yeah. Do you she's, think that's um, what she'll do when she's older? Definitely. Don't get me wrong. There's some days where she's like, I am not shooting 50 <laughs> today. There's no way. <laughs> but um, we get it done. Yeah. yeah. And she does. She loves it. She's trying to build her own, um, you know, she's trying to build her own Instagram up herself now oh, and stuff because... I think, you know, it is, it's the way forward, isn't it? And I think if we can help her, it's, I'll tell you it after me. (laughs) So I think, you know, obviously Gamify can help her build that. And she's had uh, many, many amazing opportunities come off her influencing for Gamify kids. She's done many, many photo shoots and, and things like that. So yeah, she's, she's done amazing, really. I think it's amazing that she's got like really good role models to look up to like mum and dad definitely together one million percent and she knows like she knows how hard we work especially because she knows 
she comes with us and there's been like a lot of occasions or family events even friends you know that you know we've not been able to go to because of the business and even I know I sound like such a bad mum but like (laughs) like for example I've never missed even if I've been like half an hour late I've always arrived at like a school play and before summer something had happened in the warehouse I couldn't make it and that was it and I don't think she's ever forgotten about it but these <laughs> things happen yeah. don't they and yeah. she knows at the end of the day you know I, I'm in work I'm, I'm not anywhere else you know yeah. I'm in work trying to make make it for us as a family I think that when she's older she'll look back and she'll be like I hope so I did that she <laughs> will I'll never live this down yeah <laughs> no she, they always cling to little things but my little sisters say it now they're 11 and 12 yeah and they look back and they're like do you know what they, they, they're all like entrepreneurial they want to do things and even like my little brother who's eight he's exactly the same and I'm like you don't realize what they, they're like sponges no. aren't they yeah they're just learning but you made me laugh with them more saying that she's obviously would you say she's more wild because she's the, the youngest yeah like Amara's quite you know quiet quite shy where Amara is the complete opposite I yeah. feel like Amara and me like we do laugh and joke and say like oh you know Glamify one day when the girls eventually have it when me and Ash are ready when I don't think we'll ever well, I don't think <laughs> we'll ever ready. we'll ever have enough of it but we do laugh and joke and be like you know I think Amara will be like the model she like to do like the nice part of the business mm. whereas Amara will be like you know the real go-getter <laughs> like get out of here she'll be the real stand your ground she'll one. run it definitely <laughs> she will be the CEO definitely that's insane <laughs> Have you got any plans to exit Glamify? No, no, not at the minute. You know, we love it. And I do think if there has been like a few people that have come to us and been like, you know, I don't know whether it's because obviously they've known our past history and, you know, how we've built this organically. You know, it's never, Glamify has only ever been funded from us. And, you know, it's at an amazing point. The Instagram is growing rapidly. Yeah the TikTok now so some people like do laugh and come and joke to us like suppliers or people and go you know would you ever you know sell it and, yeah. but I don't think we would no I love it too much now amazing How and not that I love it too much <laughs> but I just think I don't want I don't want to build another like another fashion brand after this now that's yeah. it now yeah you've done I'm the happy. hard work <laughs> I love it you know the past four gamify is nearly four years old now and then four years have been like I can't tell you how hard it actually has been you know yeah you're not going to turn your phone off at half five it's the sleepless night you know yourself like it's it is 24 hours a day all night long it's never never ending but yeah I love it and that is who we are really so so with with all that stress that comes with it what made you then launch your new company I want you to say it because I feel like it's it's new (laughs) studio leisure because um something that we've always wanted to do do, and during lockdown we um I feel like we came at a destination for loungewear yeah because we made that move over to Istanbul um obviously we were able to develop our own blocks and our own samples and they are all ours they're all in-house yeah um you know it took us it did take us a good while to do it the sampling process you know back and forth I feel like we've only just got it right now literally and you know that is what say from 20 was lockdown 2020 yeah yeah I think it was so three years on you know we've only just got that product right now as in the lounge where quality is unbelievable and I do think it does stand high at a market value when you look at other competitors so um yeah launching another brand I know crazy <laughs> we um we decided to create a bit more of a premium because I do I do feel that the tracksuits like I was saying before they they do stand yeah. a, like in at a higher value so um we wanted to obviously build a community around this as well yeah um so yeah that's what we've done it's called Studio Leisure um launched four weeks four or five weeks ago and it's been such a great success already Incredible. and I'm excited for this one because again I feel like you know we've been there we, we've done it we know yeah. where we're going with this and we know where we want to take this and I do feel like with the studio leisure the likes of your ASOSs and you know destinations like this are going to want to take the brand on board that's yeah. what I'm hoping for is that your aim so, yeah. to look at more of like a b2b approach yes definitely because yeah. I'm guessing it'll be harder to grow um studio leisure in comparison to glamify from 
if you look back to when you started Glamify, the years. One million percent, yeah. So different now, isn't it? And obviously Studio Leisure is only like a capsule of around um, 40 lines. Yeah. So we are going to do like, we've got to shoot for it this Thursday. Um, but again, it's very limited pieces. It's a yeah. capsule that will drop every four to six weeks. Obviously, we will keep our best sellers stocked up all the time. But um, yeah, just a little bit more of a premium. And yeah. What's a different marketing approach that you're going to take? There's probably not, to be honest. There's yeah. probably like not a different marketing approach. Um, I do feel like it is probably going to sit up there with some of the really good high ones. Yeah. But yeah, other than that, I feel like just stick to what we're doing because it's working, yeah. obviously. And I feel like with this product, you've just got to get the right girl in it. You know, it's going to take her from Pilates to the coffee shop yeah. to work if she wants to, you know, to shopping, things like that. So that's what I We'll need. find our girl for that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, I love that. So, okay. So what advice would you give to say a younger person or anyone in say their 20s and 30s that wants to start or even younger? that wants to start a company in fashion? Um, I'd say, firstly, I would say go and get a buying job. Just yeah. literally go to a big company like your Boohoo, your ASOS, yeah. get a buying job. You know, that is going to set you on the map. That is going to give you all, you know, what you need, the knowledge that you need. It doesn't yeah. matter whether you want to do marketing or you want to do um I don't know, but just get a buying job in a big yeah. in a big fashion company, learn from the bottom up and don't ever be afraid when is right to start that business because it will work if you just give it your all. Yeah. That's all you've got to do is just give it your all. Um and I would just say just get a little bit of knowledge behind you because obviously our time at Boohoo give me and Ash that. So yeah. Incredible. If you could go back to the start, is there anything that you would do different? No, I've loved the journey. Yeah. Really, really loved it. Yeah. Nothing at all. It's been amazing. Yeah. Really has. And even um, working together as, you know, we're not married, but we may as well be. <laughs> We've been together for about four, 13 years. But, um, you know, doing it together has been amazing because I just think, you know, if one of us is having a bad day or, you know, if something's gone wrong, we'll come home and we'll work it out together it's, there to pick each other up. Yeah, it's just not one person that is got all of the, you know, the stress on the head or, you know, has got that worry to to themselves. Yeah. It, it's together. We're a team. And I think I wouldn't want to do it without him as well because yeah. we just work so well as a team. What so does yeah. the next, say, five years hold for, like, all of you as a family? Um, To grow Gamify. Yeah. Take it to to the limits basically the sky's the limits with it um I feel like me and Ash have got a hell of a lot more to give yeah um new season starting so you know as soon as we'll be jumping a few flights in a few weeks Exciting. so yeah give it all we've got um and as a family yeah that's it really all hopefully you give it yeah no, amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining me thank today. Thank you so, so much for having me your and asking story. me. <laughs> it's just, honestly, your story is incredible. Oh, thank so you. if anyone wants to follow you or find you on social media, where should they look? Um, so my personal one is Holly with an IE Cassidy. I think it's got a kiss at the end and obviously Gamify. I was never really a much part of face on the brand, but I'm slowly but surely becoming it, guys. Yeah. So yeah, TikTok lives, I do them. Those of you who love a bit of TikTok, I do about three or four lives each week. And even when I do the lives, it's all personal questions I get yeah. asked all the time. <laughs> so yeah, you'll find me there, guys. Um, and yeah, but thank you, Abby, so much for having Amazing. me. Thank you. Thank you.